How's it going, everybody? My name is Josh, amateur radio call sign KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Buddy Pole Buddy Stick Pro. It's set up and it's tuning. This is specifically a setup and tuning video to get you on the air as fast as possible. Let's get started. So the Buddy Stick Pro packs in this really nice kind of nylon bag. Uh, it is padded. You can go in a backpack really easily. But it, the reason it's packed down like this is because it's got a lot of parts. So today I'm going to show you how to use this really quickly to get on the air and get on the band that you're wanting to operate on. Now my goal with this video is to get you on the air as fast as possible. This is a vertical antenna that is loaded and you have to tap a coil to adjust the band of operation you want to use. That can be tricky the first time you've done this, so hopefully I can give you what you need to get started. The first thing you're going to do is set up the tripod, so let's do that now. In the kit you get three legs and they look like shock corded tent poles. Extend these all the way and I'll show you what to do with the little T toggle on the top that mounts to the tripod. Okay, grab your tripod. You can see that it's kind of flared out from the legs and take your toggle here at the top, slide that through, and then when you get to the top, rotate it over and it keys in place. Keying is where it basically fits in a little pre-guided slot. So you take that, make sure you got it lined up, and you should be good to go, like that. Rinse and repeat, we're all three legs. All right, so you're gonna get something like this. It stands about four feet tall. Now, note, there is some play with the legs. They're gonna have a little bit of wobble to them. That's fine, that's nothing to worry about. If you want to, kinda of get underneath it or get right on top of it and then just kinda of splay the legs out a bit and then make sure it fits relatively evenly. The kit comes with an eye bolt. If you are so inclined, you are in a windy area, before you start setting up the vertical, which is gonna add wind load, there is a tripod mount on the bottom of this tripod. And if you go in and you add the eye bolt, you could take a carabiner, a piece of cordage, whatever, and you could attach your backpack if you were using this out in the field, you were doing a soda activation, for instance. And that allows you to put some weight on it, which will prevent it from tipping when you're in a high wind environment. Okay, next, there are two Vertical rods, they both have male and female connections. Let's go ahead and feed them together. If you're a shorter person, you may want to do this a slightly different way, and I'll, I'll show you what that is in a second. Feed that on the top of the tripod. Okay, so the coil is where the magic happens, and we're going to spend some time later in this video explaining how to use this to appropriately get the match for your radio. Also, the counterpoise wire this comes with is vital in that process as well. But first, for setup, take your vertical, attach it to the coil. And again, this is a little bit, you know, if you're, if you're shorter, it's gonna be harder to reach up top. So do this on the ground, on the ground. Do this while you don't have it attached yet. The, extend the vertical all the way out to start. This will vary depending on which band you wanna operate on and then feed that on top of the vertical. You will have a floating lead. You can just leave it floating for right now. Okay, give it a little twist lightly. That's the vertical setup, but we are gonna attach the counterpoise. The counterpoise comes on kind of a kite winder. It is a green wire that has a terminal connector, a loop terminal connector, or an eyelet terminal connector. It mounts under a little threaded nut right at the base of the tripod, or sorry, the base of the vertical at the top of the tripod. All right, so it's attached now, but I don't want my radial to go towards my house. I actually want it to go towards the east, which is that way. So I'm going to kind of pick this up a little bit. I'm going to rotate it, splay out the legs on the tripod just a tad, get kind of a, a balance. Note, there is going to be some wind load as you adjust your antenna here. So just get it to the point where you feel it's a good mount and then you're good to go. Now, there doesn't give me a lot of space going that direction. I'm gonna set this up for 20 meters. So I'm, in, I'm gonna end up bringing the whole thing away here. I'm factoring in the space that I'm operating in and I'll adjust again with the tripod. Try and get those legs evenly splayed out. Okay, now winding from the kite winder, 
I'm gonna start going. And as I'm going, I'm gonna start seeing heat shrink tubing come off. This would be for 10 meters or so, or six. I think the blue is 20, but I'll double check in a second. Next, I will take my feed line, which are these nice little rubber collars attached to it. Take that, unwind it, and run it into your shack or your portable setup. In this case, because I am running at my home, I do have coax that I've dragged out. Note, there is a coax adapter that comes with the kit, which is a nice touch. This is a BNC to BNC cable, which is great for you that run QRP radios that generally have BNC connectors. Just connect your coax up. All right, the next step is to do a little gross tuning. And by gross tuning, we're going to adjust where we tap the coil and uh, adjust the length of the radial. And we're gonna check it with an antenna analyzer. Okay, so I've dragged out my antenna analyzer. This is a, an inexpensive AA7100 that I got a couple of years ago. They've come down in price. If you find them used, they're okay. You could use a nano VNA for this. You could also just simply use your radio's SWR meter. I have a video on that process. I'll post the link in the description and the, and the cards so you can add and go check that out uh, at another time. Looking at the instructions, which the instructions for the buddy stick has a nice table that talks about the vertical whip length, the sections that are extended, and then the color for the heat shrink on the radial. As well, it also talks about where to tap and how many coils to count when you're looking at your coil here. I'm gonna attach my antenna analyzer right here. Then I'm gonna grab one of the little nuts here. These are terminal short points that go on the end of the floating lead. And I'll double check that my radial is at the blue heat shrink, which it is right here. I'm also gonna need a solution. We're gonna use this uh, metal chair to kind of hold the radial in the air. What separates this antenna from some other antennas is this is a elevated radial, which means you're not just gonna let it slack on the ground. So you do need a solution to hang it on something, bring a pole along with you. You could use a trekking rod, depending on how you have it configured, but keep that in mind. You're gonna measure this out with the kite winder to the heat shrink tubing for the band you wanna operate on, and then you're gonna get key make sure it's at least at the end point, two feet above the ground. For the coil, the instructions say, the starting at the top coil and counting your way down, that number is going to be where you tap it with this floating lead. And I've got this little blue connector here. For 20 meters, I wanna count 13 loops. A quick way to find where you need to be tapping out your antenna is starting at the top. So this is the top end, the female side of the antenna, of the coil. Starting at the top, count down, and every black or blue mark is five. So if you remember, 20 meters is gonna be five, 10, 11, 12, and then 13. We attach our hook, start screwing it in, start to screw it into place, and then just lift it up. And there you go. That's your tap point for 20 meters, and I've already tapped it for 40 as well. But yeah, that's the thing to keep in mind. The paint gives you five coil increments, so you can just go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and then back off one, and there's your 40 meter coil. Tap it in and screw down the blue collar to where it makes a good firm connection. All right, so I've got my floating radial and that's about the max of it right there. So I'm gonna take some cordage and tie it up. Let's take another reading with the analyzer. Okay, so looking at my analyzer, the antenna is still a little bit too long. So it's likely that I either need to adjust my radial or I've got the tap wrong. Considering how far I'm off, I believe that it's the vertical tap. I'm gonna bring this one up. Maybe my counting was off. And make sure we're tight in there again with the floating lead and do another run. All right, we were much shorter. Okay, so we've moved the tune point, but we haven't moved it enough that I would be like, okay, this is where we wanna to be to transmit. And we are looking at one to one at the lowest part. So let's adjust the radial now. I'm gonna undo my little cordage and I'm gonna take in one loop, lock it out with this little uh, point there and tie off the radial again and then we test again. All right, so with that, getting this exactly where it needed to be, apparently counting way up here, not always easy. So that's why you may wanna tap these off when you're down here looking at it. Count them, tap it off with the little screw nuts, and then uh, use the floating lead to, to short. So, so what we're doing is we're removing all the lower coils from the antenna. So from here, this is connected to the pin on your coax, goes up to this floating lead. The floating lead then cuts out all the stuff below and everything from here and up, including the whip, 
is a part of the active antenna. So we are dead on. The radial is spot on. We, we're, I'm glad I made that little loop, tick that out. Let me show you on the antenna plot where we're at and how wide the bandwidth space is to operate because when you're using an antenna with a coil, it does introduce something called Q, and that Q will narrow your usable bandwidth. So while you're operating on any frequency, on 20 meters, some of the wider bands, you may have to come out and adjust the radial as you want to move up and down the band. I've got the coax fed into the shack. It's into the antenna switch, which is connected to my analyzer. Analyzer is connected to my computer. Right here is the 20 meter band, and we're going to do a single pass from my analyzer. And you can see it's starting. Oddly enough, you should also see it on my radio here as the, as the analyzer passes because this is still on and connected. And yeah, there you go. So you can see the pass. Uh, <laughs> you can see the signal coming up. And we'll see it pass here right in the center where my receiver is. So that's about an S7 noise <laughs> that that analyzer is putting out through the coax behind, behind the radio. All right, so we're, we're coming down, coming down. This is below two to one. Um, we're passing the 175 line, which is right here. So we actually could go a little bit, a little bit closer to that. By um, now, in this case, we need to lengthen the radial again to make this more effective or to bring the SWR up. Uh, yeah, you can see we're actually towards the high side of the band right now. I think I'll do that. I'll come out with one extra uh, loop from the winder and we'll do another pass and see if that changes anything for us. All right, a quick little adjustment. Let's run this again. Red line is our first plot. Here's our purple plot is the new line that we're drawing. So it was a, just a one little turn, a little bit more wire, and I tapped it out. And there we go. Look at that. So our, our lowest point is in the CW portion or digital right around FT8 is the lowest point. So I'm just going to leave it there, even at most of, so from uh, 175 through 200 up through 300, it's all below two to one SWR. So that's more than enough to operate uh, single sideband with, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm anxious to see what we can do with some FT8. So let's try that. Well, it must've hit a wild opening or something because I'm getting all over. I'm getting into Europe. I got a contact in Finland, this OH3JF, uh, into Japan, down to Australia, hit Hawaii and South America. This is 100 watts FT8 running through the, the Buddy Stick Pro, and yeah, it's, it's uh, doing a great job out there. So, you know, I guess I got lucky a bit, but man, um, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. I mean, yes, this is a portable antenna, and I've got it in my front yard, but, you know, this is great. And this is the last contact. That's why it looks like it's throwing it over to Finland. But, yeah, Finland, the 7610 seems to be quite happy, too. It's one-to-one -one SWR way, way down here. And, uh, yeah, so that wire is smack dab exactly where we want to be for FT8. And I'll wrap up this little session with a nice little contact to the East Coast. This N3AML received a negative one from him, hearing him at a negative one as well. Shoot, <laughs> actually negative two, but but still, wow, um, fantastic. Uh, QSL, QSL, Kilo, India, six, November, Alpha, Zulu. Can I get that call sign one more time, please? QSL, QSL, I have you at a 5555 into Cerritos, California, and the name here is Josh. Well, I hope that helped get your Buddy Stick Pro up on the air again. Just to recap, set the tripod up first. If you are in a windy area, attach that eye loop or that, that eye bolt and hang a bag from it or something like that, just so you make sure nothing topples over. Then build the first section of the vertical, attach the coil to the whip, and then attach that to the uh, vertical that you're assembling. From that point, have your coil taps in place or go ahead and place them while in the field. Use the buddy stick, the buddy pull, instructions for the buddy stick pull on where to tap them and use that radial, wire it out to the, the heat shrink and then adjust it slightly using the little tapped sections that are on the winder. It's actually very easy, but there is some back and forth that you will have to play. I promise you once you do this for the first time, It'll make perfect sense to you once you get it done and you can see where your SWR curve is. 
Having an antenna analyzer is a big pro tip here. Even a network factor analyzer like a Nano VNA will do okay in this spot as well, although it can be a little fiddly. You can attach it to a phone though, and you can do it that way if you are so inclined. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It lets YouTube know that videos like these should get in front of other hams and the ham curious. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Hammer to Crash Course, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.